coronavirus COVID-19. This is the most popular name in 2020. Today, I'll be talking about everything you need to know about COVID-19. Dr. Femi Ayodele is my name. But before I do this, let me explain the term virus. Virus is an infectious agent. It does not have the ability to reproduce itself. However, it reproduces itself by infecting a living cell. After which it forced the cell to reproduce the original copy of this virus in thousands and in millions within a short period of time. After doing this, it then infects other cells of the host and take over the cells. We basically have two types of viruses. We have the RNA virus and the DNA virus. Example of DNA virus is hepatitis B virus, while an example of RNA virus is this coronavirus we are talking about. Most virus are coated or enveloped with lipid or protein coats. With this background information, let's now get started with coronavirus. Coronaviruses have been with us for a long time. As a matter of fact, they are the cause of at least 30% of all the common codes we experience as human beings. Coronaviruses are the largest genome of RNA viruses. They are RNA virus, they have lipid envelope, they infect many animals. It's few number of coronavirus that infect human beings. As I've earlier said, they are responsible for 30% of common codes we are having. However, there are new um, emergent coronavirus. These are the um, SARS virus, simply known as severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus. And we have the mass virus, which is referred to as Middle East Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. Now we have COVID-19. Most of coronavirus are respiratory um, viruses and the effects by through droplet or aerosol. Now let me quickly talk about special viruses we have before COVID-19. The first one is um, SARS. SARS was um, detected in southern China in 20, 2002 to 2003. It infected about 9,000 people and killed about 800 people. While mass um, infected mainly the Middle East region, it infected over um, 2,100 people worldwide and it killed uh, about 740 people. Now, let me uh, proceed to COVID-19. COVID-19 uh, simply means coronavirus di disease 2019. And the virus that is causing this disease is scientifically called SARS coronavirus 2 because it relates with the previously known SARS coronavirus that was discovered in 2002 to 2003 just like HIV which is the virus causing AIDS which is this disease so SARS coronavirus 2 is the virus why the disease is COVID-19 which means coronavirus disease 2019 this particular coronavirus is RNA virus and it is coated with lipid um, coats. This simply means it is sensitive to environmental factors such as soap because the soap can 
denature the lipid coats it can destroy the lipid co coats and it it can prevent inf infection or reduce the replication of this virus this virus reproduces itself or it infects by attaching to what you call ACE2 receptor in the host cell. When it attaches to the ACE2 receptor, it takes over the cell and replicates itself in thousands within a short period of time. Now, this ACE2 receptor is found mainly from the nose to the mouth to the respiratory tract, the surface lining of the respiratory system. That means the nasopharyngeal um, lining and the alveoli at the of the lungs. Now, let me talk about how this virus spreads. This virus simply spread by droplets and aerosol. Droplets simply means when you are uh, for example, an infected person is um, here and we are at a close distance. While the person is talking, there are some particles that may not, might not be seen by naked eyes that are released from the mouth of an infected person. But because we are at a close contact, as I'm breathing in, I may be, I may breathe in the virus. Or as I'm talking, this droplet may drop into my mouth. By this, because ACE2 receptor is present in the cells lining my nose through to the um, respiratory tracts, this virus can attach to this ACE receptor like key and lock. It attached to each other. Then this virus take over the cell of um, take over the cell and reproduce itself thereby causing infection it's spread by aerosol aerosol simply means maybe an infected person is in a closed um, area maybe a room and cough or sneeze in this environment the infected person leaves the room some minutes later few minutes later someone enter into this closed area because this Particles released through the sneeze or the cough is still in the air. Another person can inhale it, then get infected with this virus. This virus is not airborne. Airborne simply means maybe an infected person uh, coughs, cough, and release the virus to the air. This air is transported. This virus is transported to another place and infects another person entirely far from the um, already infected person so it is not airborne how does this virus cause disease before i explain that i have to um, talk about immunity how our immune system works when a virus gets in contact with the cell the body sends it as a foreign body or as alien to the body then our body will mobilize immune system mobilize the soldier to fight against this virus and destroy it for the first infection this process may take a little bit uh, slower but after the first infection the body will synthesize um, antibody and also there will be memory cell in case this virus infect the body again the body will then act rapidly therefore most of the time when someone is exposed to a virus the person may have a long life immunity against this virus because of the antibody that is already present in the body and also the memory cell however for those who have low immunity, they may not be able to curtail this virus. Or when the person is exposed to the number of virus that overwhelm the body, the body may not have the ability to curtail this virus. Now, this virus 
the main problem it caused to the body is that it caused scarring. For example, like someone has injury on the hand and it healed by scar. So it caused scarring in the alveoli, in the lungs. By causing this scarring, the person is unable to exchange the oxygen is breathing in into the blood where the oxygen will be useful. So there will be shortness of breath because of the scarring in the lungs. Now let me quickly talk about the symptoms of this disease. Over 80% of people who are infected with this virus, they may either be asymptomatic, that means they don't even know that they are infected, or they may have mild symptoms. However, some people may have a very uh, moderate to severe disease. The major common symptoms that are presented are fever, dry cough, and breathlessness or shortness of breath. Other symptoms may include nasal congestion, there may be um, malaise, the person feel unwell, there may be a uh, loss of um, smell sensation or um, a sense of taste. Now, why is this virus so infectious? This virus is highly infectious because asymptomatic people, people who have this disease without knowing, have the ability of spreading this disease. Usually, most virus, if viral infection, when someone is infected, they only spread this disease after they show symptoms. However, in the case of COVID-19, asymptomatic person is sp spreading, you know, shedding the virus around and infecting a whole lot of others. Now, some people are called, um, you know, comparing COVID-19 with Ebola and Lassa fever. While COVID-19 is a respiratory infection, Lassa fever and Ebola, they are hemorrhagic fever. That means they cause uh, um, bleeding in the body. And someone can only get infected firstly after the person has started manifesting symptoms and secondly when there is close direct contact is not spread spread by aerosol it's spread by contact with the body fluid of the infected person so the means of um spread is actually different between um covid 19 and ebola and lassa fever now um how do we prevent coronavirus infection? The prevention is simple. I just want you to understand these two principles. The first principle is that for you to be infected, the virus must get into your mouth or your nose. Because these are the place where the cells that have ACE receptors are present. And the virus needs ACE receptor before it can infect human being. The second thing that you need to understand is that this virus responds to environmental factors. As I've earlier said, it has lipid envelope and this lipid envelope can be destroyed by chemicals such as ordinary soap or detergents or eats. Now, let me talk about the prevention, having knowing these two principles. The, most, the first thing is that you have to suspect everybody as a potential carrier of this virus. So when you are with people, you must keep a distance of at least two meters. This is the only time when the person is talking, the droplet from the person is not likely to reach you or when the person sneezes or coughs keep a distance of at least two meters with everyone. The second thing is that you stay at home. 
you isolate yourself from the general public as much as you can until this pandemic is over. Other thing is that do not shake hand because our hand is like a vector for the virus. Our hand does the virus does not infect our hand by getting into our hand. But average people touch the nose, the mouth and the face many times within an hour. So when we stop shaking hand with people or coughing into our hand or sneezing into our hand rather sneezing into an elbow or coughing into our elbow it will go a long way preventing us from getting infected because when we sneeze into our elbow or cough into our elbow the spread of the virus is limited those who are infected or who are exposed to an infected person should isolate themselves so that they will not infect other people always wash your hand with soap and water as many times as possible especially when you get in contact with um, surfaces or with um, in the public space make sure you wash your hand as much as possible with soap and water and at least for 20 minutes making sure that every part of your hand is washed every part is washed while you are washing your hand i really want to make this clarification about soap and water and sanitizer the most important agent that fights against coronavirus is soap and water soap acts as a surfactant on the virus thereby destroying the lipid the lipid coat of the virus sanitizer is good but has less effect it cannot be replaced with washing hand with soap and water for 20 minutes also let me clarify the use of face mask in the recent face mask is preventive although not 100 percent but it has some level of protection against the spread of the virus for general public it is not advisable to use mask because you have to use mask properly which means it is used once and discard you may only use mask when you are going to a place you feel you may be exposed for example you are going for testing and there are so many people want to get tested it is safer you use a face mask because many people may have the virus among those people who, are, who want to be tested the care of those who are taking care of um, COVID-19 patients need to use masks to protect themselves also infected person need to use mask because when they use mask, the mask limits the amount of droplets that goes into the air when they cough, when they sneeze. The use of glove is actually counterproductive. You don't need to use glove. The most important thing is to wash your hand with soap and water. The only people that can need to use glove are the carer of an infected person. Now let me briefly talk about testing of coronavirus. Presently, the testing is using PCR, which means polymerase chain reaction to analyze the virus. This test usually tests for the virus and it takes time before the result is out. It tests if you have the virus or not at the moment not if you have it previously or you have it uh, not when you have it previously because it actually tests for the viral antigen in your system other tests but not yet available is antibody tests 
this may actually test if you have been infected previously. Now, how do we treat COVID-19? Like most um, respiratory viral infection, COVID-19 is safe limits. That means someone who is infected with this virus may get cured of this virus without any specific treatment. Especially those who are asymptomatic, they may get rid of the virus without any specific treatment and those with mild symptoms may also get rid of it without any specific treatment. However, the current treatment line of treatment is symptomatic treatment or what we call supportive treatment. This means when someone who um, is infected um, is having, let's say, um, fever, you give antipyretic to reduce the fever. When the person is having body ache, you give Panadol to reduce the body ache. When the person is um, having shortness of breath, you give oxygen or you give um, you use respirator to um, ventilator to assist the person. In some cases, there may be superimposed bacterial infection, which means um, there is viral infection, but because of the viral infection, the person now have bacterial infection on top of the viral infection. Then antibiotics are used in this situation. Other form of treatments that are not um, that are still under trial are the use of hydroxychloroquine sulfate. Hydro hydroxychloroquine sulfate is a powerful anti-malaria drug. I personally use chloroquine a long time, many times. In fact, my earliest memory as a child was when my parents took me to a doctor. They called the doctor, Dr. Ghani, and he gave me chloroquine injection. I can never forget that day. Because of the injection, because of the pain, I can still remember up to today. So chloroquine is already tested in human. So it makes it faster to do the trial to see how effective it is then before it can be given to the public because of the side effect of chloroquine also. Other medication are antiviral medication that are already in use in the market. They are being tested for um, their effectiveness against COVID-19. Also, as I've mentioned earlier when I was talking about immune, Im, how our immune system works, some people who have survived the COVID-19 infection, they already have antibodies secreted into, in their blood against this virus. Now, they are taking the blood of already um, survived person they are taking their blood and now separating the blood cells and the plasma. This plasma contains the antibody. This antibody can be um, transfused to a um, person that is still battling with the infection. And this will assist the, pe the person to fight against this virus. This also is still under trial. Presently, there is no vaccine for this virus. Vaccine is like something that is produced to stimulate immunity against the virus so that when the real virus comes, the body will easily fight against the virus. Usually, they may use killed, vas killed virus. Kill they kill the virus and they inject little amount into your system so that it will stimulate immunity when the virus comes. Sometimes they use glycoprotein from the virus and sometimes they use live virus to stimulate this um, immunity against um, the, the virus. These are the process which a vaccine is produced. For this very um, COVID-19, there is no vaccine available. I cannot complete this video if I don't talk about my fear in Africa and especially in Nigeria. 
about COVID-19. Now, COVID-19 is in Nigeria and we already have one, over 130 cases. The problem with this is that isolation may be very, very detrimental to the people of Nigeria because most people, majority of the population live from hand to mouth. That means if they don't go to work for one day, they will not be able to have food to eat for the next day. If they don't go to the market, they have no food to eat. It is a very serious situation. If you have the ability to stay at home, stay at home. Government should provide for those who have nothing to eat. This is the only way to combat this virus. We cannot do without social distancing, we cannot do without washing our hands, and we cannot do without isolation, locking down the city. However, government has to provide alternative. People, hunger cannot kill people when the virus is not yet killing them. My second fear about COVID-19 in Nigeria is that we have so many cases of community-acquired pneumonia. The symptoms of COVID-19 and community-acquired pneumonia that is very common in Nigeria is almost the same. There is breathlessness and there is cough. This will now make health workers not to attend to people who have pneumonia. Thereby, a lot of people may die of pneumonia, not COVID-19. Because when there is no protective equipment for health workers to use, they will see all cases of pneumonia as COVID-19. And someone who will ordinarily survive from pneumonia with just simple antibiotics will die of pneumonia. I remember I was in Nigeria during the case of Ebola and Lassa fever. So many people died because they had symptoms similar to that of Lassa fever, to that of Ebola. And people were not at, hospitals were not attended to them because they don't have the required equipment to take care of that problem. I hope the government will do something about this. I know there are a lot of questions you may have about COVID-19. You may post it at the comment section below and I'll make a video regarding it to explain everything you may want to know about COVID-19. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel and give me a thumb up. Thank you so much. See you another time. Bye.